Toxic masculinity. The problem is toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. I don't think there's anything toxic about masculinity. Now to be clear, when someone's using the word toxic masculinity, they're often just referring to a guy that straight up is being an a No, the word masculine, as I understand it, defines the finest attributes. To me, masculinity involves aspects like strength, courage, honor, independence, commitment, and leadership. When somebody throws the word toxic on it, it's really devaluing the term. So that being established, how does one come off as more masculine? Well, the first characteristic I want to talk about is being able to make a decision. Yeah, I've seen this. It's horrible. Literally everyone is asking everyone else, what do you want to do? I don't care. What do you want to do? I don't care. And it just keeps going on. Now, I get it. Sometimes people just want to be easygoing. They don't want to upset anybody. But if you want to come off as more masculine, don't be afraid to give your opinion. I find that simply starting with the phrase, hey, I'd like to make a suggestion and then proceeding to do so, pointing out the great points, why it's going to be beneficial for everyone. Now, I know some of you guys are thinking, hey, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want some woman telling me, hey, you can't tell me what to do. Jets, first up, that rarely ever happens. And third, the studies back up that women still like a man that brings a plan of action to the table. And note, this is very different than telling people what to do. No, you're just providing a clear path to an easy decision. The next tip to level up your masculinity, understand the power of eye contact. Now, the rules are simple. When you're talking with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's a man or a woman in general in the Western culture, you want to maintain eye contact about 60 to 70% of the time. Now, that other 30 to 40% of the time, you can take breaks. And by that, you can look to the side. You can, you know, I like to maybe just think, look down a little bit. What you don't want to do, though, is look up or look bored. And by the way, this is not a hard and fast rule. It's a simple guideline. Some of you guys in other cultures may actually have a lot less eye contact. In any case, it is something that gets better with practice. Now, what if you're talking to a group? So, this is where you want to spread out. You still want about that 70, in fact, you can go up to 80% eye contact, but you're going to go from person to person. And I like to be equal with the distribution, unless I'm talking directly to somebody and then somebody more as a spectator. But even them, I like to turn around and give them 10 to 20% of my eye contact to let them know I recognize them, that they are still part of this conversation. Lastly, this part's a little bit harder, but it is important. Make sure to adjust. There are some people, they just are very timid. They're not going to have great eye contact. So, it is okay to actually have less. Don't see it as a sign of disrespect. Just understand that not everyone is confident enough to to maintain eye contact throughout a conversation. Now, what about appearance? So, this is a style channel. I've got thousands of videos on how to dress better. You better believe I think it's important. And if you want to come off as classically masculine, don't be afraid to dress well. A lot of men unfamiliar with style and history somehow thinking that dressing well is effeminate. To that, I'll say Winston Churchill, Martin Luther King, SRK, Idris Elba, Brad Pitt, Ryan Gosling, Teddy Roosevelt, Sammy Davis Jr., and James Bond, from Sean Connery to Daniel Craig. Gents, if you couldn't tell the unifying theme, all of these guys understand the importance of style and image. The fact is, your clothing speaks for you before you even open your mouth. If you dress like a strong, masculine man, you'll be treated like one. And let's not forget grooming. Gents, if you've got hair, you want to take care of it. If you are starting to lose your hair, consider checking out today's sponsor, Keeps. Get professional care for hair loss from the comfort of your home without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. Male pattern baldness is a genetic condition that affects two out of every three guys by the time they are 35. Keeps also offers hair thickening shampoo, conditioner, and styling pomade. These products work together to complement your treatment plan and enhance results by making thinning hair look thicker using a special formula designed by hair loss experts. So, once you're on their website, you're going to complete an online consultation. The treatment plan is going to be personalized to meet your unique needs and is recommended by a licensed medical professional. All of this delivered right to your door in discreet packaging. They support healthy hair growth with natural science-backed ingredients like biotin, caffeine, green tea, and saw palmetto. Keeps has over 5,000 five-star reviews. And to get started, go to keeps.com slash RMRS. And gents, I'm putting that link as well down in the description of today's video. And remember, when you use that link, you get the best deal on the web. Now, this next tip is one of my favorites, and I think any man can implement this immediately, and that is to slow down when you're talking and to speak more deliberately, especially when you're around people that interrupt you. It happens to all of us. I was just at an event with a friend of mine and 
What I found is that whenever he would interrupt, he didn't mean anything by it, but you just continue to speak and you speak and you get your thought out there. It's funny, he starts to catch himself and he's like, oh man, sorry, I just got this bad habit. Now, not everyone is that self-aware and a lot of times it happens with somebody maybe that you don't have as much patience for, you're not good friends with, but by speaking clearly, by speaking deliberately, by slowing things down, you actually make people listen to what you're saying, especially when you learn how to fully enunciate what you're saying. And again, get rid of those crutch words because your mind has time to catch up before you speak. You take a couple seconds to think about what you're going to say. Now, why does this come off as masculine? Well, think about a lot of your favorite movies. Well, you're a good man, Lieutenant. Good man always knows his limitations. They're stoic. They're a little bit quiet at times. They're not a fidgeter. Every time they speak, every time a word comes out of their mouth, it has meaning. Work to become that guy. It is a change of habit. And by the way, I know on my videos, I speak very quickly. I do that because I know it keeps your guys' attention. But in day-to-day -day speech, I have to say that is one thing. I try to slow it down, especially when I want to get my point across. Now, there was another point that I sort of alluded to just earlier, and that is maintaining your composure, not showing your emotions. Men have just as many emotions as women, but men were taught to suppress them. And I'm not saying that you need to be full on, you know, suppressing or that you need to be a lot more open. This is something it's probably for a whole other video. I do feel men should show emotions, but whenever you're engaging with others, I do like to be a little bit more guarded. I know we've got a whole world right now that's saying men should just be emotional. Yeah. I don't fully buy into that. I do think that as a man, it's a little bit of a poker face. I don't like people always to know what I'm thinking. And uh, if you've ever watched The Godfather, let the enemy see that there's a little bit of conflict between maybe you and your father. Oh, are you telling me that the Talia's guarantee our investment? Wait a you know, Sonny had learned that lesson the hard way, but also it's, you know, okay, that rubbed me wrong what you said, but I'm not going to react to it. I'm not going to give them the satisfaction. I'm going to remember and try not to hold a grudge, especially if I don't know them, if they didn't mean anything. But if you realize this is that person's nature, this is what they're doing. They're trying to get that rise out of you and I'm not going to give them that satisfaction. Next up, let's talk about the handshake. So it fell out of favor for a while because of COVID. You just had people doing the fist bump, but nowadays it is coming back. I do think a good handshake is a great sign of strong masculinity, but it can be difficult. I know for me personally, I don't have the biggest hands. So when I go in for a handshake and I'm not thinking about it with a guy that has a larger hand uh, or them, someone that has an aggressive handshake, all of a sudden I can find that I'm on the receiving end and I've just got a weak grip. Now, if this ever happens to you, one way to recover is to say, hey, let me do that again. And immediately I go in for a better handshake. I point out that I don't like weak handshake, that they kind of got me at a point. But in general, I do find that turning my hand just a bit allows me to get a little bit of an advantage. I'm not looking to crush people's hands. I'm not that kind of guy. And with women, you do want to be a little bit careful. You do not want to crush their hands. In general, though, you should give them and treat them just like men, at least in the Western world, when it comes to shaking hands. And there's no reason to pull the politician shake, you know, where you try to grab them and you're gripping them and you're holding. Yeah, that kind of thing, just avoid in general. Now, what about the kissing on the cheeks? Well, I know you guys over in Europe, maybe Latin America, you do this a lot more, especially with the ladies. Ladies, I stay away from it. I don't fully understand it. Yeah, that one just seems like it's a landmine. Now, this next signal of masculinity is actually pretty rare, and that is somebody taking responsibility. Now, this is tough, especially when it is not fully your fault. I know in certain workplaces, this could be really bad, but I find that as the owner of a business, even when somebody has an issue that is not my fault, it's somebody on my team did something they probably shouldn't have. I just take full ownership. In fact, here is a trick I learned from a guy named Alex Ormosi. He talked about there could only be one person in the angry boat. One thing that he talks about is if you've got customer that is super upset, if you go into it and all of a sudden you're at a higher level of being upset and you're not upset with them, you're upset with the situation, with whoever did this to them, you are going to find the culprit on your team. You're going to flog them with a wet noodle. Okay, maybe you're not going to be that harsh, but you get my meaning. The reality of the situation was when someone's complaining, when people are screaming for someone to take responsibility, that's what they want. They want to be heard and they want someone to say, hey, 
it's my fault. They understand people are human and they understand that, okay, let's fix this. So if you deal with that, if you say, it is me, it's my company, I take 100% responsibility and you know what? We are going to get this fixed. That's exactly what they want to hear. Now, again, this is situational dependent. I don't want you taking on responsibility for something that could end up costing you a lot of money and put you out of business. But I do find in most situations, when a man takes responsibility, he has ownership. It gives him a lot of power because he realizes he has the ability to make the change to adjust and to, to fix the situation. The next sign of a strong masculine man is he is kind. And that's not the same as being nice. When you're nice, you're trying to get something out of it. At least in general, when I see that word being used, a kind man is in a position of power and he is trying to help others. He's basically trying to pull people up. This is you opening a door, not only for a woman, but for a guy that needs that help. It's you going out of your way to protect others. Again, doesn't matter the sex. It just, you see somebody that needs help, that needs assistance, and you are in a position of strength. You are in a position of abundance. And when you can give that, when you can be kind to me, that is a perfect example of being masculine. Next up, a masculine man, he is not afraid of silence. He's not afraid of being on his own. So many people, I think I was in a presentation one time and we had a lot of tech people in there and they were saying that people would rather have their arm broken than have their cell phone broken. And everyone laughed and a lot of people agreed. I thought that was horrible. I'm like, are you kidding me? But the issue they're talking about is people don't want to be bored. People don't want to be alone with their own thoughts. You need to do this with yourself. You need to have time in which you're just having coffee. You're not on your phone. You are just thinking. I find that journaling really helps having something to write to get the thoughts out of my head, even if I'm not going to act on them. It doesn't have to be super productive. Sometimes it's just doodling, but you've got this time alone that you are with your thoughts and uh, you're kind of putting them in order and you're, it's a really powerful exercise. Now, right with this one is being direct, being tactful. A lot of people, they don't like confrontation. I think confrontation is a good thing. It's a necessary thing. Think about your favorite movies. There's something that needs to be resolved and that's what leads us to the climax. In meetings, the worst meetings are when people are afraid to confront other people. I find great meetings have a little bit of conflict. What happens when you have a good conflict that is healthy, you usually have resolution which leads to you solving the problem. Now, understand, I'm not saying for you to be cruel to people. I'm not saying for you to call out people in public and belittle them. No, I'm saying for you to have a healthy conversation and for you to step up sometimes and say, hey, I think we need to talk about this. Is this a good time? Don't have an audience one-on-one -on -one, lay out how this makes you feel. It's not, you're not blaming this other person, but being able to have that direct conversation, that right there, super masculine. And by the way, if you're watching this video and you're a woman, don't think that masculinity and feminine, that, that they are opposites. That's not true. Actually, the opposite of masculinity is being childlike. As a man, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to be better than the Antonio yesterday, the Antonio a year ago. And that's, I think, the true comparison is you look at who you were and you're trying to get better. That's what, that's who a man is comparing himself to, not to others not to, you know, compare yourself to women. Uh, and I think women can have all these traits pretty much. And if you've got an opinion on this, let me know in the comments, gents. But what video to watch next? Boom. Guys, I got you covered with this right here. Oh yeah, you want to watch it. Powerful video.